Government employees will soon have new benefits under the Federal Employee Paid Leave Act. Eligible employees will get 12 weeks paid leave after the birth or adoption of a new child or to care for a sick relative. Mika Cross is a federal workplace expert. Mika, thanks very much for coming on. How will this work and who's eligible for this new benefit? Well, this is really exciting. It goes into effect October 1. It's for any federal employee right now under Title V. So there are, are some exclusions, but who has birth, adoption, or placement of a child. Unfortunately, it doesn't go back in time, meaning if you have your child on September 30th, it may not apply to you. Um, but it also works in tandem with FMLA leave. So if, in fact, federal folks have had to use a portion of their FMLA or unpaid leave any time during this calendar year, that time would also count towards the 12-week maximum allocation. What's great about this is federal employees can use this new parental leave um, within 12 months of the birth or placement or adoption of a child, and it entitles them for up to 12 weeks of paid leave. That's really great news. So you could stack this with uh, a spouse or another family member who has the same benefit, doesn't work for the government, and so you could do 12, and they could do a different 12, and you could have, that's all, like half a year uh, with a new adoptee or to take care of a family member, right? There are different combinations, and in fact, if your spouse or partner are, is a federal employee um, and qualifies for this leave as well, both parents would be entitled to that under this new regulation, which is really precedent scented. I'm very excited to see this for the federal workforce, and I think it's monumental for the country at large. How's it different than what's available to people now? Well, right now, you know, employees are having to use a combination of their own paid leave. Sometimes if agencies offer something like a sick leave bank, they can tap into that. Um, there's also the potential of, of course, using unpaid leave, but that's really not very advantageous, especially for newer federal employees who may come in at junior ranks and um, may not be in the financial, you know, capability to be able to take care of their child for that long without pay. So this really does revolutionize and modernize some of the benefits that we've been talking about for quite a long while in the federal government. Anything else that employees should know about taking advantage of this? Is there a special process they have to go through or is it the same as putting in for other kinds of leave that they want to take? There is a requirement for employees who tap into this leave, no matter how much of it they use, that they stay on the rolls for at least 12 weeks after they use it. So even if you only were to use, let's say, three weeks out of the 12-week entitlement, there still is a 12-week requirement for you to stay on the rolls as an employee after that, unless there are some special circumstances that agency directors can waive. I want to shift gears, Mika. You've been tracking the way that the pandemic has changed the workforce, the way they work, the places that they work, and the way that leaders and managers lead and manage. What are you seeing? What do you think are the biggest changes that will stick after whatever becomes the new normal becomes the new normal? It almost seems like we are the new normal now, right, Francis? I mean, I'm really encouraged to see some of the innovations and modernization that we've been speaking about for so long, really in this test bed environment. So from performance management tactics that we've been touting, meaning regular check-ins, being very deliberate, making sure you're being very clear and succinct with feedback, those things are happening in this virtual environment by very nature of the way that we're having to work together because we don't have that in-person face time that often very many managers were relying on. We're also seeing agencies very speedily um, expand to the cloud and other modernization um, efforts with technology. When you're thinking about embracing a workforce with five generations of federal workers and different competency levels, different um, levels of comfort with certain technologies, this is really rapid fire. And especially for, you know, an organization as large as the nation's largest employers that's very top heavy with um, sort of an aging workforce, this is really refreshing to see because agencies are having to get this right, both for the customers, but also internally considering the employee experience and making sure that their employees are staying connected and have the information that they need and make sure that they're supported in the workplace. So. Um, I'm actually very encouraged by some of the creativity and innovation that I'm seeing all across the federal government right now in this environment. Are leaders seeing any differences in the way that they're rolling out training and upskilling, or is it too early to tell yet, do you think, Mika? Oh, no, I think they're absolutely doing, uh, seeing these kinds of changes. In fact, you know, when you're thinking about 
current onboarding mechanisms and how you're going to be able to integrate new employees who have never been a part of the workforce before and integrate them well into this culture. It's really amazing some of the creative solutions that we're seeing. Um, even in terms of recruitment, look at the US Army with what they're doing with their virtual hiring events and continuing the recruitment process overall. And then agencies that are able to actually bring in on board and get employees settled into this virtual environment, sometimes using their own devices, sometimes using agency equipment. Um, I think also there's a, a high potential. In fact, there was a hearing just the end of last July um, on telework savings across the federal government. What we might expect to see as agencies embrace this way of working differently. Do I think it's going to stay the exact way? No, it can't. Um, but I think there may be a lot more options and ways to track incentives and also um, giving options to the to the workforce as well. And, and when they have to be at a workplace or a facility versus when they don't have to and what the cost savings and benefits could be both both for the people and for the taxpayer. Mika Cross, great to have you on as always. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francis.